up to 80% of medical equipment in Sub-Saharan Africa is actually donated equipment. Um, so it's donated to hospitals here, often by very well-meaning individuals and organizations, but the majority of that donated equipment is never put into service because the donors haven't consulted enough with the recipients and haven't thought about whether or not they're sending the equipment with spare parts and with training and with support for the people here in the hospitals who actually need to be able to understand how to operate and take care of the equipment. No, the, the donation of uh, medical equipment, it's, it's a good thing. But uh, at times, I think we are not given an opportunity where you would sit down with a donor and ask some uh, little, little things they overlook, like the issue of, uh, of a manual. To us, that is very, very important because it's from the manual that we can be assisted even to come up with a preventive maintenance plan and other the issues like uh, educating the end users. I think a, um, a lot of uh, people generally want to help their link hospital and they think that equipment, any equipment, um, if it's in good working order, will would be a significant gift for the recipient um, link hospital. But sadly that isn't often the case. Um, if the donor um, cannot use the equipment, it becomes a disposal issue. And what is more, it can actually cause harm. There's a lot of inappropriate donations, that's the first thing. Um, I've heard of situations where whole containers turned up um, from overseas, the president of the country has come and virtually everything in the container was worthless. I've heard of situations where a diathermy turned up and on it, it said, no good, broken, sent in third world. Yeah, completely crazy and inappropriate things. That said, you know, the developing world exists of donated equipment. So there is a significant percentage, goodness knows what it is, that gets through and is delivering. So I think that's important that we recognise that. However, there is an immense amount of complete and utter rubbish that is sent that is absolutely worthless, will not do anyone any good at all, um, and is creating significant problems from just a waste point of view. Sure, now these are a challenge incubators actually. It's yeah. something that we're quite often asked for and there's a whole bunch of issues with them. Yeah. If you get the right unit, they're actually quite simple, mm. you know, and some of them... If there's loads of inappropriate equipment there, that shouldn't be happening and it's all there because people haven't asked the right questions, they haven't looked at their objectives and they're being more interested in a well-motivated way of making themselves feel good as opposed to thinking about the outcome for the receiver. Over the years we have learned quite a lot about um, best practice and things to look out for. Um, in the beginning it was very much a case of looking for equipment that um, we knew would have a use in Tanzania and uh, with support we could assist people to use it but uh, we did realise that there were more issues um, to be taken into consideration um, for instance, um, the suitability of the equipment within the service area at KCMC. Could they get the consumables? Did the engineers know how to repair it or maintain it? Could they get spare parts? There's a lot of things that you have to take into account with um, donating equipment. And from the perspective of the Trust, um, we were wanting to ensure that the donations would be used. What's important? all the time in this work is that the equipment that you are getting has to fulfill the objective to which it's required. So an ultrasound has to work long term, you know, and it has to work in that environment and be um, appropriate for the skill level of the user. So that's all the time in this work you have to be asking what are you trying to achieve um, and I might add that's not about or making the donor feel good, it's about delivering something that will, will, will achieve at the end the end user so that, um, you can but it's just about knowing what question to ask um, and that encourages the end user because they are excited that they are being asked the right questions um, and uh, because they know that means that when the kit arrives and hard-earned money and effort has been spent in getting it there then it's going to do as they say what it says on the box the equipment we've primarily brought out have been around um, improving orthopaedic surgery. Um, one of the um, very important pieces of equipment that was brought out was called an image intensifier. 
which is um, an x-ray machine for use in theatre during operations. And at that time, that was the second image intensifier in Kenya. And you can't do modern orthopaedic surgery without that piece of equipment. Um, the image intensifier that we, we bought was um, a second, second hand um, and we uh, sourced it through um, another medical, uh, medical equipment charity called MedAid um, and uh, it, was, it was sourced and transported uh, by arrangement um, uh, with, uh, with, with that charity. Um, it was they're incredibly expensive pieces of equipment, so we were very pleased to be able to um, acquire uh, a second-hand piece of equipment which had been checked and, and, and validated. Um, uh, and it's also quite an issue to transport large pieces of equipment like that, which is a problem we keep running into. Um, and so uh, they were able to help us with arranging transportation. We had problems with the image intensifier actually because the, the container was um, impounded um, in Mombasa for quite a period of time. And, um, it was uh, a very simple error. People put donations of clothes in the container with good intention, but when customs saw that, customs impounded it because they were unhappy with the importation of cheap clothing into Kenya. Um, so that was, a, that was a lesson. Don't put your second-hand clothes in with your medical equipment. This came from via, I think it was used at some point in the military, and as you can see, it's, mm. it's absolutely, it's no good to send it. Relationships with the recipients, with customs, with everyone involved in the whole process of the absolute fundamental success. If you don't, like anywhere, have a good relationship, then everything's going to go wrong, basically. Um, because you, you need to understand what is required. You need to have trust. Um, you need to make sure that all the communication channels are open because that's when things go horribly wrong in terms of freight coming through. People need to know when it's coming through. They need to know how it's coming through. Contact details need to be in place so that everything's done in advance, so there's no hold-ups because hold-ups in customs often means money. And there's no reason why we can't uh, get all these things planned in advance so they will go through. So the whole relationship thing is absolutely vital. Uh, SET have been developing a toolkit which will help uh, organisations and institutions in the UK to decide whether to donate and if so, how to do it appropriately. So what's really important to us in this is that the end result is actually better health care for patients in the uh, partner institution overseas and we hope that the whole process of using the toolkit will help to uh, improve communication between partners uh, and make sure that appropriate steps are taken uh, when dealing with donated uh, equipment.